We're doing something that you're very familiar with. Uh, we're going to be finding ratios from tables. You already know how to make the tables from um, before, so now we're going to read information from the table to answer questions. Students in Mr. Webster's science classes are doing an experiment that requires 250 milliliters of distilled water for every 5 milliliters of solvent. The table shows the amount of distilled water needed for various amounts of solvent. So this information here is here on the table. And you can um, use this to help you fill out the rest of it. They also were very nice and put that. So um, we could come down here and use the information they give us. How do you get from 2 to 100? You would take 2 times 50. 2 times 50 is 100. That's my tying sign right there. Multiplication dot. Okay, so 2 times 50 is 100. And over here with the one they gave, gave us, 5 times 50 is 100. If you didn't know, you could take 250 and divide it by 5. And that made 50, okay? So 5 times 50, when you multiply those together, you get the number in the box, 250. Okay, so you can take all of these numbers times 50. What's 3 times 50? 150. 3 and a half times 50, I don't know. And here they go backwards. What times 50 is 200? I do not know. So I'm going to take 200 and divide it by 50. <clears throat> 50 doesn't go in a 20, but how many times does 5 go in a 20? 5 goes in a 20 four times, so 50 will go into 200 four times. Okay, so that'll be um, 4. Now I'm going to take 3 and a half times 50. Let me erase this so I have more room. I think there was a faster way to do this. Three and a half times 50. Zero times five is zero. Zero times three is zero. Then I come down here and use my place, my <clears throat> zero as that placeholder. Five times five is 25. Carry my 2, 5 times 3 is 15, plus 2 is 17. Add those together. I have one decimal number in my problem, so I need one in my answer, and that's 175. Let's check real quick to make sure this is reasonable. The numbers we filled in, are they increasing but not too much? And 2 goes from 2 to 3 to 4 to 5, and then this 3.5 that they have there is halfway in between. 100, 150, 200, 250. So they're adding 50 each time. This one right here, it was halfway, so they added 25. So that makes sense. Okay, now I'm going to very quickly delete all that. The, use the numbers in the first column. Oh my gosh, wait, I didn't mean to get rid of this. I just wanted to clean up the work. Um, that was 4. This was 175. Use the numbers in the first column of the table to write a ratio of distilled water to solvent. This is the first ratio. So we would say 2 to 100. Or we could say it like this, 2 to 100. Well, you say it the same way, but you write it differently. These all mean the same thing, 2 to 100. How much distilled water is used for one milliliter of solvent? The table didn't go that low, but half of 2 is 1. So what's half of 100? 50. This is saying, this is saying that for every milliliter of solvent, you're using 50 milliliters of water. Use your answer to write another ratio of distilled water water to solvent. So that would be 1 to 50. Okay, 1 to 50, 1 to 50. 
The ratios in A and B, are they equivalent or not? A and B, are these equal? In other words, is 2 to 50 the same thing as, no, 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 no. That's not 50, that's 100. Is that the same thing as 1 to 50? You can quickly check that by cross multiplying. 1 times 100 is 100. 50 times 2 is 100. So yeah, they are equivalent. How can you use your answer to B to find the amount of distilled water to add to a given amount? How can you use this? Like if I said, what if I needed 30 milliliters of solvent? Are you going to create a table all the way up to 30 to find the pattern? and add 50 all the time down here? No, what did we do to get from the top to the bottom? We just multiplied times 50. So you would say multiply the milliliters of solvent times 50, okay? Now, let's look at this question. Is the relationship between the amount of solvent and the amount of distilled water additive or multiplicative? How do you get from the solvent to the water? Did we add 50? Here, 2 plus 50 is not 100. What did we do to get from the top to the bottom? We multiplied times 50. Okay. E, complete the table. What are the equivalent ratios shown in the table? So how do you get from 100 to 2? Divide by 50. You can go from the bottom to the top. 2 times 50. So what's 3 times 50? 150. 3 and a half times 50? What was that? 175? 200 divided by 50? Well, it's 4 and then 250 divided by 5. All they did was just flip the ratios. Just what was on the top is now on the bottom. Look for a pattern. When the amount of solvent increases by 1 milliliter, the amount of distilled water increases by what? Increases by 50 each time. So 6 milliliters of solvent requires how many milliliters of distilled water? Well, for every milliliter of solvent, you need 50 milliliters of water. So that would be 300. Okay. Now we're going to graph with the ratios. We're using the same numbers over and over again. On uh, this it says copy <clears throat> the table. So I'm just going to very quickly put those numbers back in here. That was 150, 175, 4, and there you go. So write the information in the table as ordered pairs. Use the amount of solvent as the x-coordinates and the amount of distilled water as the y-coordinates. Okay? These are your x numbers across the x-axis. And these are your y numbers across the y axis. And remember, in the alphabet, w, x, y, and z, x comes before y. So when you look at these little ordered pairs, x is, represents the first number, and y represents the second number. I'm going to delete that real quick. So for uh, 2, if your solvent is 2, the water was what? It was 100. When it was 3, it was 150. When it was 3.5, 175. When it's 200 milliliters of water, we needed 4 of the solvent. And then they want us to graph these. So the 2 and the 100 go together. So you go across to the 2 and up to 100, and you put a dot. 3 is, they don't, show you the 3. You have to know 3 comes between 2 and 4. And they don't show you the 150. You have to know that's halfway between 100 and 200. 3 and a half 
175. Okay, three and a half is going to be like right here. And 175 is going to be about here. So that's here, right there in that square, like that. And then four and 200. And then five and 250 is graph for you. So you see how that makes a straight line? That means that it's proportional. It's all equal to each other because it made a straight line. So we graph the order pairs and then we connected the points, described the graph. It makes a straight line. Straight line. For each ordered pair that you graph, write the ratio of the y coordinate to the x coordinate. Very important the way they say that. They want the y number first. Okay? So when you look right here, what would go first? 100 to 2. For the second ordered pair, 150 to 3. 175 to 3.5. It's weird seeing a decimal in a fraction, but remember these are not fractions. They are ratios. 200 to 4 and 250 to 5. There's all of our ratios. <clears throat> if you wanted to, you could have written them with the word 2 or with a colon instead. D says the ratio of distilled water to solvent is, that would be right here, 50 to 1. How are the ratios in C related to this ratio? Okay, all the ratios would simplify. To 50 to 1. So I'm going to take like this one right here. What's a common factor of 250 and 5? and that's 50 and that would equal 1. The point 2 and a half, 125 is on the graph but not on the table. The ratio of the y coordinate to the x coordinate is what? Okay, what we can do here is go to the graph and graph it. 2 and a half is halfway between um, 2 and 3 and then 125 would be halfway between 1 and 150, so it would be right here in blue. The ratio of the y coordinate to the x coordinate is um, 125 to 2.5. How is this ratio related to the ratios in C and D? Okay, if you divided those, you would get 50. So it's also 50 to 1. It is also equivalent to 50 to 1. How do I know that without even dividing it? I didn't divide it. But the fact that it's on that straight line, it's part of that line, it's sitting on that straight line, that makes it 50 to 1 because it's equal to all the others. Okay. Um, two and a half milliliters of solvent requires how many milliliters of distilled water? Okay, how many did it say right here? It requires 125. <clears throat> what do you think is true for every point on the graph? As you increase, that means go up, one on the x-axis, you increase how many on the y-axis? You increase 50 on the y-axis. Okay, how can you use the graph to find the amount of distilled water to use for four and a half milliliters of solvent? Okay, how would you do that? Okay, find 
four and a half on the x-axis and follow the y-axis to see where on the graft where on the graph that's the line where on the graph they meet where they touch, where they join, where they intersect.